a big year on the way, um, and it starts off uh, internationally with a trip to Australia. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, in the works at the end of last year, so um, we were fortunate enough to sell out in a day, and we're really excited, and, you know, coming up, we're actually announcing, I think tomorrow, uh, we're going to be announcing that we're doing a, I guess we're really announcing it today now, is we're going to be doing a closed circuit event um, at the arena, so there'll be a ballroom that we'll set up, um, everyone will get to see all the fights, and that's to just try and alleviate some of the more demand on the event and try and give the fans you know, a real UFC experience. So we're excited to be able to do that and get that for the fans. So that's the big news for us right now. So Abu Dhabi, I think for a lot of people in the U.S., is kind of a mystery. Hell, the U.K. is. We're so insular here. But you've been there. What's it like in, in, in terms of uh, the atmosphere for holding a fight and selling tickets? And I, I know the, what the population of the city itself is about 900,000. Yeah, so there is um, uh, basically about 90 minutes away, a little bit less, you get to Dubai. Dubai, you know, most people now know about is one of the um, uh, entertainment areas within the UAE. Abu Dhabi is uh, an area that prides itself on not only the business, banking, and oil that it um, actually facilitates throughout the world, but is turning itself into a cultural mecca of the UAE, and they're proud of what they're building. You know, they're building some great museums, and they bring in great um, um, cultural events, and Flash was obviously set up to do that. So when you when you go to Abu Dhabi and you fly into the airport, you can't help but feel the optimism and the gold rush mentality that's going on there, that there seems to be um, a real optimism that, this is going to be, you know, one of the leading cities of the world. And, you know, there is a very high-level um, segment of society that is uh, that has a significant amount of disposable income. Um, and there's a pretty good middle class when you look at the expats and all the, the, um, the Emirates, you know, the locals. Um, so, you know, for us, when you evaluate that market, you kind of look at, you know, who are the potential ticket buyers. And there's a lot of them, and they sell out. You know, just about every event they ever do there, you know, 14,000, 16,000, 20,000 people going to concerts and events like that. So, um, you know, it seemed to be as we were planning this, you know, that all the boxes we could check in terms of, you know, the notion that we'd have a successful event. Okay, big question. Concerts and other events, where do they hold them? Do they have an arena? Well, it, they hold them at, at different places. You know, the majority of the events are held outdoors, so a lot of the events are held um at the uh, Emirates Hotel, which is this beautiful palace hotel, it's um, it's got a big um, grassy area where they build a stage. You know, the uh, opportunity for us would include the building of an outdoor arena. Um, so we are. I was just there actually last week. We're continuing to talk about the notion of getting this event off, and you know, the the structure for the arena and the marketing and the PR and all those kind of things that come with uh, organizing an event. So you would liken it to uh, maybe what Vegas used to do with Caesars with the outdoor boxing? I, I think so. You know, having never attended one and watched all those fights on TV, you mm -hmm. know, I don't know what that setup was like, but yes, I would imagine that, you know, you'd have some sort of covering on it. You'd have, you know, a pretty intimate live setting. You know, we'd still, you know, in our current planning, look to have, you know, 10,000 seats or more, depending on, you know, the configuration we go with. Uh, and from all indications, it's going to be a hot, hot ticket. Uh, you know, there are already a number of the... Um, the families there that are looking for tickets. I was just speaking with our partner there, who was coming from a a, a party there, and was you know, people were coming up to congratulate him about the relationship. And he said he was blown away that people that you know he wouldn't have expected to be fans are fans. So that's the kind of stuff we hear when we go into new markets. So that makes us even more optimistic. So, needless to say, if the sheik asks for say um, six or ten thousand tickets, you're going to give it to him. Um, Maybe well, not ten thousand, you know, but he's going to get what he wants. Yeah, you know, it's certainly you know, the Flash guys and the uh, and the royal family and the government there. You know, there are now our partners, and yeah. um, you know, we're pretty good to our partners. Yeah, you can sit where you want. You're going to get a good seat. You're going to get lots of them. Um, <laughs> so Abu Dhabi's coming up. Is April 10th? I mean, does it look likely, or are you going to have to line up a backup? And here's the other thing: when Dana White says build an arena, there is no absolutely no possibility that is going to be like a a regular you know twenty thousand seat arena. Well, it's going to, with the exception of a roof and walls that uh, right. circulate, it will be an arena with raised seating, which will have 
um, it, very much in the UFC style of a cathedral kind of seating, um, or I'm sorry, a coliseum style seating where you have people very close to the action. You know, it's something that Lorenzo and Dana harp on that we want to try and make sure that we deliver the same atmosphere as if it were indoor. But uh, yeah, but make no bones about it, the area we're looking is basically um, a gravel currently, and it will be built uh, for a UFC event and will. Uh, be dressed in a way that it will feel very special. Now, again, you know, we're not real familiar with Abu Dhabi in terms of tourism. Are you going to draw any sort of European crowd to this at all? Uh, you, you know, it's always hard to say. You know, they, they, for instance, the tickets in Australia. You know, even though they sold in a day, over fifty percent of those tickets came from outside of the state of New South Wales, which is where Sydney is located. And you know, the majority of the other, I think it's fifty-two percent that were sold from outside that region came from um, not only within Australia but from points outside. When we were in Germany, we sold about eighteen percent of the tickets that came from outside of Germany, so other European countries um, and North America. But you know, to be more direct, I'm not sure where they'll come from. You know, the demand could be so great, you know, in-country, um, and the opportunity to buy tickets is through a ticket agency there. Um, you know, the the, um, the prospect is, is that we'll likely be pulling from the UAE um, and other parts of Asia. And I think, you know, people within Europe, you know, it's an eight-hour flight from here, but it's a simple flight. It's not a killer on time change. So I think we're going we're gonna to promote this event, um, you know, assuming we pull this all together in areas um, throughout Europe um, and the UK and in some of our Asian partners. So there will be promotion you know, f- through a lot of the region of the world for this event. For the April 10th date, any pitfalls, anything that could you know, blow up that date and you know, have to line up a backup? Uh, well, you know, it's funny that we have, even though they're not really plan Bs that we consider, we have venues held in so many places it would make, you know, people, we keep a chart of all the venues we're holding around the world. So in the event that, you know, as we are moving forward with an April uh, event, um, if we can't do one venue, we can almost just turn the switch and just go to another venue. So, you know, whether April happens in Abu Dhabi or another place, you know, there obviously will be an April event. So I, I think with the international expansion, some of the reaction from fans in Vegas is a, a little disappointment because it means maybe we lose some events here. And yet, I don't know if we can support as many events as we've had the last year. We kind of struggled a little bit with the economy. What's the reaction in the U.K.? I mean, you guys look like you were lined up for five, six events a year. What if that gets cut back a little bit? Well, I, you know, I haven't heard a lot of it yet because we're still in early days. But, you know, I, I think that um, it's something that's on our mind because we have only so much bandwidth for international events because, um, you know, the market is so healthy in the U.S. And, you know, even though we have a very strong initiative to continue to expand the sport, you know, we have in our mind, you know, the kind of range of international events that we want to do. And, you know, it's generally between four and eight kind of international events. And so when you start plugging off Australia and then if Abu Dhabi was to happen and then you think about the Canadian events, um, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you're pushing the limit of really how many you can do. And, um, you know, I think we're going to, as we plot our way through this, you know, in short order, we're going to know what's uh, realistic for the U.K. market on events. And, you know, it's hard to keep everybody happy. And I suspect that if we don't come with a lot of events, we're going to hear it. Exactly. Which is a good thing. That's That's a great thing.